Lesson 1, Introducing the Ribbon. In this lesson, we'll take a look at the brand new Excel 2007 interface known as the Ribbon. We'll understand the various tabs, where they hid the file menu, and the tabs that come and go in reaction to what you're doing. The Ribbon looks different at different screen resolutions. I'll show you how to minimize the Ribbon completely and how to get back to the old Excel 2003 style dialog boxes. Well, Microsoft completely redesigned the interface for Office 2007. Gone is the old menu of File, Edit, View, Insert, Format, Tools, Data, Window, and Help, and we now have new ribbon tabs of Home, Insert, Page Layout, Formulas, Data, Review, and View. The concept is that on each tab we have related items. In many cases we have large icons for the more important things, sometimes drop-downs that lead to other menus, and then tiny icons that are grouped into groups for various other commands. So the Home Ribbon, in theory, contains all the most important items. There's the Insert tab, the Page Layout tab, everything that used to be in File Page Setup is here. The Formulas tab is all of the different functions, plus the Name Manager and Formula Auditing items. Data contains almost everything that used to be on the old Data menu. The Review tab, and the View tab. Now the frustrating thing, as you start to use Excel 2003, you're trying to figure out where your favorite old commands are located. You often go from tab to tab to tab to try and figure this out. The one thing that you might notice is that none of these tabs seem to have a Print button. Page Layout has Print Area, Print Titles, Print Grid Lines, Print Headings, but no Print. Well, it turns out that the Print icon is on the File menu. And now, as we look across here, you'll see that there are no items with the word File. As I was working with Excel 2007 before the product came out, back in the various beta versions, there actually was a file menu in the original Office 2007, but as the artists got involved, they were able to redraw all of the icons, and in almost the last version before we went to the live product, they decided to take the word file and replace it with an unintelligible symbol. So this icon up here, Microsoft is calling it the Office button, is actually the old file menu with all sorts of important things like new, open, save, save as, print, prepare, send, publish, and close. It's not trivial things they hid back here behind the menu with no name. It's almost as if the fans of that rock star from Minneapolis from the 80s, Prince, who later went on to become the artist formerly known as Prince, well, now we have the menu formerly known as File. The very first time that you install Excel 2003 and open it, that button changed from white to yellow to white to yellow. Did it twice. I don't even know if you noticed it, probably in most companies, your IT manager is the first one to fire up the program to make sure that it worked. And he may have seen the uh, yellow instead of you. Now, the other thing that's unusual is that the ribbon is going to appear differently on your monitor, depending on what size screen resolution you have. These lessons are being recorded at 800 by 600, and so we're seeing certain icons, but I shot some screenshots at what the ribbon would look like at, let's say, 1440. Now you see at 1440 already here on the left hand side, we have some words, cut, copy, format painter, whereas here we just have icons. At 1440, as I scroll over, the cell styles, conditional formatting, format as table, and a gallery actually appears as several icons instead of just a single drop down here offering those same items. If you compare 1440 to 1280, a lot of things along the left-hand side are very similar. The only thing that we lose is the gallery in cell styles is reduced to a cell styles drop-down. As we get smaller, as we go down to 1024, you'll see at 1024, that's where you lose the words cut, copy, and format painter. Wrap text in merge and center reduced to a couple of icons. And the large insert delete cells are reduced down to tiny icons. They use this general strategy until we get down to 800. That's what I have here. Now as we go below 800, you'll notice that more and more icons continue to become reduced to smaller icons first as we keep going. 
you'll see that some of the groups here have now become drop-downs instead of groups at all. Eventually, when you get down to below 300, Microsoft figures, well, you can't possibly be working in Excel and they will hide the ribbon entirely. So there, let me go back to Sheet 1, you'll see that we just have the cells and no ribbon whatsoever. To get the ribbon back, you have to at least expand the window past 300. Now, it's possible, if you think the ribbon is taking up too much vertical space, to minimize the ribbon completely. Right-click and choose Minimize the Ribbon. In this manner, the ribbon is collapsed to just the tab names and if you would later need to go on and enter one of the commands, so if we need to do a data sort A to Z, the ribbon temporarily comes back, but once we finish our command, the ribbon then goes back to a minimized state. Turn that off. The other thing that you're going to notice is that occasionally you're going to get new ribbon tabs. Let me insert a shape here. Now, because the shape is selected, you see that we have a new tab called Drawing Tools Format. This tab includes all of the items that we might need to format that shape. And this tab is active as long as the shape is active. As soon as we click away from the shape, that tab is put away, as Microsoft says. So if you need to get back to formatting this shape, you need to click on it and the context tab comes back. There's many different context tabs. They show up when you're working on charts or pivot tables or pictures or smart art. As many as three new context tabs will appear in response to being inside the chart or the pivot table and those tabs contain all the items unique to working on the selected object. Well, finally, let's talk about how to just get back to our old Excel 2003 style dialog boxes. You'll notice in many groups, in the lower right-hand corner of the group is a tiny little icon. This icon actually looks like the top left corner of a page with an arrow pointing down into the right. This is called the dialog launcher and when you click this, you'll go back to the old-fashioned Excel 2003 dialog box. Now, the one thing to note here is that many times the ribbon has the most popular commands. So here we have certain things on alignment. However, the actual dialog box will have more, for example, shrink to fit, which is not in the ribbon. So sometimes you do have to go back to the dialog box to get to all of the commands that you might need. Well, that's a quick introduction to the ribbon. In Lesson 2, we'll take a look at the Quick Access Toolbar. And in Lesson 3, we'll come back and give you strategies for finding your favorite icons on the toolbar. I hope you found that helpful, and thanks for watching. Looking to advance your career by acquiring new skills? Tired of expensive off-site training programs? Wish you could learn from the best instructors in the industry? Look no further than Live Lessons self-paced personal video instruction by the world's leading technology publishers. Each live lesson comes with a DVD featuring three to four hours of instructor-led classroom training, sample program code that allows you to work along with your personal instructor, and an example-rich study guide. Live lessons allow you to watch the entire course from start to finish or navigate directly to any of the individual lessons. You'll literally watch over the shoulder of your instructor as he shows you how to build state-of-the-art applications. Live lessons, the power of the world's leading technology experts at your fingertips. To learn more, visit MyLiveLessons.com today.